This is the third section of chapter two on correlation. And this section is about hypothesis testing for zero correlation. Now this gets covered in the year two applied um, correlation chapter. Um, so I'm not gonna go for it in a great amount of detail. I'll put a link in the description uh, and something you can click up in the corner to go and watch that video. The only difference between this is that the way that we calculate the PMCC is uh, manually rather than using a calculator. And also we use uh, Spearman's rank as a way of deciding whether there's a correlation or not. So just as a quick summary then before we get started, uh, this is how we find the PMCC as we've done before. This is how we find Spearman's rank. And for this type of hypothesis test, we use the Greek letter rho to signify whether there's a correlation or not in our sample, sorry, our population. So H0 is always going to be that there is no correlation in our, um, in the population. And H1 is going to be that there's either a negative correlation in uh, the population, a positive correlation in the population, or it could be any type of correlation in the population. And then once we've um, done our calculation for R or RS, we then compare it with the critical values on page 37 of the formula book. There's one table for the PMCC, and right next to it, there's a table for Spearman's coefficient. And we can then decide whether we're going to accept or reject uh, H0. Example six, a chemist observed 20 reactions and recorded the mass of the reactant, X grams, and the duration of the reaction, Y minutes. She summarized her findings as, as follows. So here's the summary statistics here. Test at the 5% significance level whether these results show evidence of any correlation between the mass of the reactant and the duration of the reaction. So the first thing we're going to do is to state H0 and H1. So H0 is going to be that there is no uh, correlation in the population. It's always going to be that for H0 when we're testing for zero correlation. And H1, because it says evidence of any correlation, doesn't say positive or negative, so rho is going to be not equal to zero, which means we're going to be doing a two-tail test. So let's also write down our sample size because we're going to need that. Uh, which is N, and that is 20, because there were 20 observations. And since this is a two-tail test, because this is not equal to zero, and we're testing at 5% significance level, we need to split the significance level. So we'll just write down significance level is gonna be 2.5% in each tail. So now we do our calculation, which is actually to calculate what the PMCC is, right? So that's SXY over the square root of SXX times by SYY. Right, so let's start with the top SXY. Um, that's going to be the sum of XY, which is 65, minus the sum of X times the sum of Y, so that's going to be 20 times by 35 divided by n, which is 20. So that's the top one, that's SXY. So we'll now work out the bottom part. If I can get a straight line like this. So it's going to be a quite a big square root here. So we start with the sum of x squared, which is 35 minus the sum of x squared, so that's going to be 20 squared over 20, that's SXX, that's going to be times by SYY, so that's the sum of y squared, which is 130, minus the sum of y, 35 squared over 20. So let's work this out, see what we get for R. Right, okay, so that will give us 30 at the top, over the square root of 15 times 68.75. And that gives us a value of 0 
So we'll give that to three significant figures. So we'll do 0 0.934 three significant figures. Okay, so we've done our calculation. What we now need to do is to compare this value to the critical value from the table. So the way that I do this is I draw this number line. Again, if you look at the video that I've done on this from the applied year two, you'll see the method. So I'm going to have zero in the middle here and let's have minus one and one. And then we go to the table on page 37, uh, go to significance level two and a half percent down to a sample size of 20. And I see the critical value is 0.4438. So I'll put that in 0.4438. And then also negative 0.4438. Three, eight. So anything um, over here is where I'm going to reject eight zero, and anything in the middle is where I, I accept eight zero. Now my value of R was uh, 0 0.934, so that's clearly in this section here. Okay, that was my value of R, 0 0.934. So that tells me that it's in the extreme bit, it's in the tail. So that means I'm going to reject hate zero, reject hate zero. And we need to say why well, we're rejecting hate zero since my value of R 0.934 is greater than 0.4438. Then we finish with our conclusion. So here we go, there is evidence to suggest or there's evidence that there is a correlation between the mass of the reactant and the duration of the reaction. We can pretty much just copy down the sentence that's here. Example seven, the popularity of 16 subjects at a comprehensive school was found by counting the number of boys and, uh, and the number of girls who chose each subject and then ranking the subjects. The results are shown in the table below. Calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Now, since it's quite a long table and the rankings are already done for us, I'm just going to uh, do the table sideways like this. So write down the subjects and then here have D and then D squared. So we know to calculate the rankings, we're just going to do the boys rank minus the girls rank. So I'll start it off and then I'll pause it and fill it in. So two minus four is going to give us minus two and then five minus seven, nine minus uh, 11, eight minus three, uh, one minus six and so on. So here are all of the uh, differences between those rankings. So now I'm just going to square them and put the values in the bottom row like this. And then I'm going to find the sum of those so that I can work out Spearman's rank. So you've got four, 36, 16, and one. So now let's find the sum of all our differences squared. And that comes to 214. So from here, we can say that Spearman's rank is one minus six times the sum of those differences squared. So six times 214 divided by now N is 16. So let's just write that down somewhere over here. N equals 16. So we'll have 16 times by 16 squared minus one. Right, so that gives us 233 over 340. So we could maybe give that to three significant figures and have 0 0.685. Okay, so let's just highlight that for part A. On part B, it says using a suitable test at a 1% level of significance, test the assertion that the boys and girls choices are positively correlated All right so for part b um, a suitable test would be that h zero 
shows that there is no correlation and H1 is going to be that there's a positive correlation. So this is a, a one tail test. So we, we're going to use 1% level of significance. We've done our calculation for the correlation coefficient. What we now need to do is to find out the critical value. So we go to page 37 of the formula book. We go to the last column, which is the 1% level of significance. We go down to a sample size N of 16, and we get a critical value of 0.5824. Okay, so we'll just write that down. So critical value for N equals 16 and our 1% level of significance is 0.5824. Okay, so I'm going to use my method where I just draw this number line here. Probably don't need to. I just find it helpful like that. So my critical values are going to be at 0.5824, negative 0.5824. So this is the area over here where I'm going to be rejecting H0. My value was 0.685, which I can see is here. My spin was right, correlation coefficient. Okay, so it's in the area where I reject H0. So I'll write that down. So reject H0, and we need to say why we're rejecting H0 since um, 0.685 is greater than 0.5824, and then finish with our co conclusion. Now, what we're, we're asked to test the assertion that the boys and girls scores are positively co correlated. So we can say there is evidence to suggest to suggest that the boys and girl scores, girl scores are positively correlated. So again, you can just copy down what the question says. So you should now be able to do exercise 2C on pages 35 to 38 of the textbook.